Hi, everyone. I'm Esperanza Zenon. I'm a physical science professor at River Parishes Community College in Gonzales, Louisiana. Today, I'm going to share some information on a grant project that I participated in through the Louisiana Library System, Lewis, and the Department of Education, DOE. The project involved developing a dual enrollment physical science course using open content, OER. So here's the agenda. I'll share some information on the grant project. We'll look at a, the course description, the press book that we developed, the Moodle course. I'll talk about the review process, the importance of accessibility, and the course that I'm currently piloting. So this dual enrollment physical science course was developed as part of the interactive OER for dual enrollment project. And this was funded through a FIPSI grant from the Department of Education. The Louisiana Library System, Lewis, served as the grant manager. So I'm curious to know if any of you are utilizing a similar funding stream to support developing dual enrollment courses. Uh, and in particular, I'm interested uh, to know if you're developing dual enrollment utilizing open content or your. So drop me a line or a comment um, or reach out to me via email and uh, share any information that you might have regarding how you're currently uh, tackling developing um, dual enrollment courses. So here is the course description. So the statewide common course description for physical science one involves surveying concepts in physics and chemistry. Uh, at my institution, we use the course numbering system, PHSC 1010. Uh, additional description is provided so that uh, topic areas are kind of listed out or enumerated. So things like motion, electricity, magnetism, uh, introductory chemistry, like balancing equations, um, periodicity, uh, atomic and molecular structure are all part of this course, as well as some other areas that, that you see listed. So we basically focus on uh, introductory physics and chemistry. This is the press book that we developed, Exploring the Physical World, an updated and expanded introduction to the physical sciences. So um, we took a textbook that was in existence, an, a, an OER, an openly licensed textbook. And what we did was we modified some of the topic content and we added some additional uh, resources to the textbook. So. Um, let's see if we can get into the textbook. I may have to stop the share just briefly and once this comes up and then uh, reshare so you can actually see the website. So just bear with me. Okay. Now I'll share again. Okay, so this is the actual textbook that we developed, um, I should, and I keep saying we, uh, there's a team of us, myself, James Boffenmeyer, Mustafa Elisar, and um, Shirley Vides. We all work together to uh, develop the content, to, to develop this press book, to develop the Moodle course, um, to support this dual enrollment physical science course. Uh, and so, you can see that this textbook was created with a CC BY license, uh, non-commercial, uh, meaning you can't use it to make money or you can't make a profit off of it. Uh, there's a download capacity for the book in case the student or user wants, wants to have that. Um, and also, um, uh, we'll see once, once we get into the book, there's some additional items that we added. So let's take a look at one of the chapters. 
So this is basically the introduction, um, kind of outline, outlining some of the resources that are available. And as you can see that, um, you know, we also relicense this under a Creative Commons license, um, the same license that the original content was developed under. So let's take a look at maybe, uh, let, we'll take a look at the first chapter. They're all organized a bit similarly, but uh, you know, I'll highlight some key features of the actual chapter. So one of the nice things is that we right up front list the objectives and you notice that numbering system uh, accompanying each learning objective. I'll talk a bit more about what that represents when we get to uh, the review process. Um, and then you go into the content. Now, um, th there is a glossary um, uh, that accompanies this textbook. Uh, in this particular chapter, there aren't any highlighted um, or linked to items, but in some of the other chapters, some keywords are are linkable to the glossary so that students can go and take a look at, you know, definition um, if, they, if they need to do that. Also, another thing that we did add to the textbook was, see if I can scroll down and get to it for you, are these links to learning um, as well as these H5P activities where the student can do a quick check of their understanding. Those items were not part of the original textbook. That's why we said we expanded it. And then, you know, we kind of massaged some of the content to, to better represent what we thought belonged in a, an introductory uh, physical science course. So I'm gonna stop the share here regarding the textbook because every other chapter is laid out similarly. So I'll stop the share here regarding the textbook and then I'll reset and get back into my presentation. So thank you for indulging me while I uh, you know, make that swap. Okay, so the next thing is the actual Moodle course. Um, so let's see if we can actually get into that course. And again, once again, I'll probably I have to stop the share briefly and get into that. So let me stop the share and now I'll reshare and bring you here. Okay. So that's the actual um, Moodle course. So you see there's a welcome, um, the course description. And here are those items that you saw, the numbering, or in the chapter one in the objectives. So these are what we call our course learning outcomes and they're numbered so that in any given chapter, you can see how the chapter objectives reach back and support the course uh, learning outcomes or course objectives. Information on navigating the, uh, the, te the, the course, uh, all of these um, kind of administrative items are customizable. There, there is a template that the adopter can go in and and you know tailor to their needs. Um, information on academic resources, technical support kind of resources can be customized, but we gave a template so that they can update those. You know, um, ha have a basis or you know, a base level of information provided. Uh, then we have a getting started information, um, which basically kind of, you know, reminds the student of certain things that they need to be doing on a regular basis. Uh, the syllabus is provided, they're um, re required to introduce themselves. And then just a general Q and A forum for, you know, general kinds of questions. Um, a section where some instructor resources are provided, and then we get into the actual content. So for each learning module, there's a chapter outline provided which shows the topic areas that'll be de de dealt with. 
and you'll find those I, those items kind of bolded and enumerated in the uh, textbook. Um, these are the same objectives that you saw at the in the green box for chapter one. Notice that numbering. Now you know that those numbers represent the course learning outcomes that the students student will um, will be you know hopefully mastering along the way. So you can see how each unit objective maps to the course level uh, outcomes or objectives. And then we give a sequencing regarding the activities. So we're basically telling the student, if you wanna achieve the, achieve the chapter objectives, you need to complete these materials in this order, for example. Uh, and then you get into the actual resources and activities. So here's a link to that press book, chapter one. And then there's an assignment that goes along with that. Um, there's a discussion. There's a video assignment where they, they watch a video and then they have to you know answer some questions, do some summarizing. And then there's an activity assignment that typically involves some type of simulator or simulation and then a report assignment where they write a report on that particular simulation. So every module is laid out like that. The uh, only modules that are a bit different, and I'll take you down and show you that, are the exam module. So here's an example of the midterm exam module. And so we lay out all of the instructions, the objectives, um, that the student uh, needs to, you know, is, is trying to achieve. Um, I mean, excuse me, the, the steps that they need to follow um, in order to uh, achieve those objectives. We provided the instructor with some various uh, resources for the for creating their own exam, or and we provided a sample exam. Um, you know, they can utilize all or none of these items, but at least we provided, and we did a similar thing for the final exam. Okay. So that's a brief introduction to the actual Moodle course. So I'll stop the share here. and go back into my presentation. Again, thank you for indulging me while I made that swap. So, to ensure that the course that we built met certain design parameters, you know, maintain certain standards, we use the quality matter to review the course. So if you're familiar at all with quality matters, you know quality matters has eight standards. One of the key aspects of quality matters is alignment. In other words, you must have measurable course objectives you must have measurable uh, module level objectives and those module level objectives must align with and support the course objectives. That's why we utilize the numbering system. But not only that, if you go into any assessment, assignment, and even the tools and resources that we use, you must clearly show evidence of how they support the overall achievement of the module level objectives and then the course level objectives. So there must be alignment throughout the course objectives, the module objectives, the assessments, the assignments, the, the tools and the tools that are being used. Um, uh, just, just to be clear, Quality Matters does not specify how the course should be delivered, but it does uh, speak to how the course is designed to make sure you know there's some quality control in place. An important aspect of quality matters is assessment. That's standard number eight. And I like Moodle in that there's an accessibility checker provided in Moodle so that you know if you have some accessibility issues. Um, in order to successfully pass quality matters review, you must have zeros in the 
key areas that it checks for accessibility. So your images must have alt text. Um, you must uh, utilize good layout, meaning you know white space is adequate. Um, titles, headings, those types of things are used properly. Um, all links must have meaningful text and not just the URL specified. Uh, videos must have captioning or transcripts provided. Tables must specify reading order in terms of the um, row and column headings. And then uh, you must use text um, appropriately, meaning you don't use any colors that are um, fonts that could create issues for screen readers. So um, in order to, for our course to successfully pass, we must have zero errors in all of those areas. And you can see that specified here. Uh, I didn't just create a, a, a picture with zeros. If you actually go into the Moodle course, you'll see that, you know, we actually, um, you know, made sure that everything was accessible um, in the course according to these items. And so this semester I'm piloting the course. So I'll briefly take you out and let you see what that course looks like. Let me open it up and then I'll um, share that with you. Um, I've got to log in, so just give me a moment. Okay, so I'll stop the share and now reshare so that we can take a look at the actual course that I'm piloting. So this is the actual physical science course. You'll notice right from the start that the layout looks a bit different because we're utilizing Canvas. And my uh, college, uh, River Parishes, has certain guidelines and uh, design requirements that we must meet. Um, and so that's why it looks a little bit different. You know, we have a landing page, um, whereas the Moodle course, you jump right into, you know, kind of module layout. Now we do utilize modules in this course and you'll see here are um, the modules. There's some administrative information that we are required to provide. So, um, you know, it is available in, in our uh, kind of open and introductory modules. Uh, there's a syllabus acknowledgement in this course that I didn't have to have in the Moodle course. Uh, some information about general navigation. So you'll see a lot of the same topic areas are provided here. Um, links to support, whether it be uh, technical support, academic support is also provided. So basically I took a lot of those templates that were being utilized in the Moodle course and customized them to, to uh, make available in this course. Also uh, adding those additional items that my college requires. Uh, course resources. And so you see, you know, things like the schedule that um, is germane for this course. Whereas in the Moodle course, um, the person who adopts the course would have to provide a schedule. Um, and then, you know, some basic resources like some useful links and websites, uh, just some general resources, uh, math review, that kind of thing. Uh, this course uses Respondus for proctoring. Um, we didn't have to specify any proctoring in the Moodle course. Uh, getting started module, basically you can see some, some of the same items that you saw in the Moodle course. Uh, like the introduction module where students introduce themselves. And then you get into the actual learning modules. So I'll provide an overview, some reference materials, the press book. So you can see my course has some additional reference materials in addition to the press book, um, some other tools and practice materials. And then you see the assignments, the discussion, the video assignment, the simulation activity assignment and the report assignment that were all represented in the Moodle course. So you can see my module has a few more items um, compared to those in the Moodle course, but you know, uh, the adopter has that right. They can use only the items we provided. They can 
uh, use more than the items we provi provided, or they can opt to not use what we provided and, and, and substitute something that they like better. All right. So um, let me stop the share and then I'll go back into the presentation. I do apologize for all the swapping around, but I want to make sure that you could actually see uh, the items that were provided and developed. So um, that's basically um, the the course that, you know, information on the course that we developed. Uh, let me just go back. I'll go back to the introductory slide and put my contact information up on the screen for you. So as I mentioned, um, if, if you are in the process of building a dual enrollment physical science course and you wanna reach out to me, um, feel free. If you're wanting to adopt this course, uh, reach out to me. Uh, I'll make sure that you have access to it. If there are funding sources or resources that you're using that um, you, you don't see represented in what I've built, please feel free to share. I'm always looking for good, good content especially open content. Um, and so um, if you have any questions for me, uh, please feel free to drop me a comment or reach out to me. I'm always happy to engage. Uh, so thank you for uh, joining me and hopefully you found something here useful. Take care.